<laughs> yes. So now that the, the subject we are going to speak about uh, this time is uh, what I consider as uh, maybe the most brilliant uh, pages of Armenian history. And uh, it's a paradox because that was in uh, at a time where the Armenian kingdom was outside Armenia. Was outside Armenia, but it was still the, the kingdom of Armenia. So how come that? Well, we saw last time that uh, the, in uh, 1045, the Byzantines put an end to the Bagratid kingdom of Armenia, in Armenia. But in uh, 19 year, years later, the Turks came and uh, took Ani, the capital of Bagratid Armenia, from the Byzantines. So that was the end absolute of any Armenian kingdom in Armenia. No more after 1045. So this invasion of the Turks provoked, of course, a certain immigration of Armenian noble families. And uh, where did they go? Well, uh, now, for instance, the Armenian from, from Armenia, where do they go? They go where they, where they, where they are Armenians. Uh, so for instance, why they go to Los Angeles? Because, because Los Angeles is full of Armenians. That's the only reason. Well, what was the Los Angeles at that time? Well, it was the, the, the northeast corner of the Mediterranean. Uh, Silesia and, uh, and the Fatesia, the, the northeast. Why? Because this was still in Christian hands. It was part of the Byzantine Empire. But the Byzantines have uh, had a very, uh, uh, a very uh, little... Uh, they, 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 they have very little... Uh, Authorities. Λέει για την ιστορία της Αρμενίας κάνει σεμινάριο, αυτό είναι ένας παππούς. So many uh, in this area there were already some uh, uh, some Armenian families who had settled before, Around, in particularly in in Edesia, in uh, Antioch, in uh, uh, so the but. And that's very important. These Armenians who had settled that before had become uh, had adopted or were obliged to adopt the Greek religion because they were in the Byzantine Empire. Uh, on the contrary, the newcomers, the Armenians from who came in the, this area after the, the the fall of Ani, well, they remained faithful to the Armenian religion. So there were uh, some families, the two main main families who are going to to have the the principal role in all that were the Rubenids and the Hetumids. Both of them settled in the in the, in castles in the mountains of the Taurus. Uh, well if you if you look at the, the geography, Silesia is a very privileged country because it's uh, it's close with mount, the sea and the mountains. The sea on the south <laughs> the Taurus Mountain on the north, the Amanus Mountain on the east. So it, uh, it's very difficult for, for a foreign army to, to, uh, to enter. Yeah. Particularly the Taurus in the north was very well protected. There was, a, uh, there was practically uh, only one way to enter. It was called the, 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 Silesian, uh, the, the Silesian Pass. The, the the Silesian gates, let's say. So if if an army could could protect the Silesian gates, well, no one could enter from the north. So it was very, very uh, uh, completely different from Armenia, which was open on every side, totally different. So the the the, the, the Rupinians uh, uh, and the Hetumians, of course, they were rivals. Well, if you have two families, two Armenian families, they are rivals. We want it or not. The first ones to expand expand in the, the in the, the, the plain were the Rupin Rupinians. The Rupinians became to to come came down from their. Uh, from their, uh, their, their stronghold in the Taurus Mountains, and uh, they spread in the, in the, the, in the, in the plain. Uh, first of all, they captured a very important city called Anazarba, which still exists, 
Banas Harbor, very, very important city protected by a castle. And that was, let's say, a kind of the first capital of the Rubenid uh, dynasty. The, 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 Hetum, the Hetumid for the moment were, uh, didn't uh, uh, interact. They left uh, Rubenid. Of course, they, they, uh, the Rubenids uh, captured all that over the Greeks, the, the Byzantines. The, the Byzantines. And little by little, the the the, the Lupinids ex expanded in the in the plain. They, uh, they 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 took advantage of a of a very important phenomenon, which at that time it was the first crusade. The the the, <coughs> the Turks had taken Jerusalem in the uh, in 1074. And uh, so that was a very blow for the Christianity, and they decided to the the, the Pope uh, decided to, to to organize the first crusade. So the crusaders uh, uh, went on at the end of the of the 11th century toward Jerusalem. So they passed the, the Straits uh, in the Byzantine Empire, and it's very important because in the, uh, the the important thing is that when they entered Cappadocia. Which is just uh, on the boundary of Cilicia. Well, they write, and it, it's uh, the the the, uh, the participants of the of the cruise right. And now we entered in Armenia, which means that the Armenian element was so strong that they thought that it was Armenia coming from Europe. You know, they they thought it was Armenia. Uh, now, what were the relations with Armenia and the Franks? Well, very ambivalent because first of all. There were there were a kind of solidarity of Christian solidarity, but on the other side, for the Franks who were Catholics, the Armenians were heretics. So it's uh, very ambiguous uh, relations. But the uh, the Armenians played very cleverly with this uh, this ambiguity. Uh, when the the in, for instance, one I just give an example. Uh, the, 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 the an Armenian prince of Edessa called the, the Toros of Edessa, who was there before, so who was uh, at, uh, of Greek religion, was threatened by the Turks. So when he heard the arrival of the of the, the France, he sent uh, the, some uh, ambassador to ask them to come and help him. To get rid of the, of this uh, the, 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 of this Turkish threat, and one of the the the, the lords of the crusade called Bardwin the Bardwin thought it was a very good opportunity to create a, a, a state for himself. So he went there. He was uh, very well uh, received by Toros, but uh, after some time, he. Uh, uh, he organized a sedition a revolt against Toros, and Toros was killed, and he took his place. So you see, the relations were very ambiguous. So that was uh, the county of Edessa was the first of the Christian of the Latin states uh, created in the uh, in, Paris, in the East. Uh, so then the, the 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 rest of the crusade continued. They took uh, Antioch and created the principality of Antioch, the second one. Then they took Tripoli on the on the seaside and they, the county uh, the county of Tripoli, and then they arrived in front of Jerusalem. As I told it last time, <coughs> Jerusalem was no more in the hands of the Turks, because the, the Fatimid Arabs from Egypt, one year before, had taken Jerusalem from the Turks, and the vizier Al Afdal, who was of Armenian origin. Uh, uh, be, became Muslim, but Armenian origin. Well, he proposed to the to the, the the crusader not to fight each other, but to but to be allied against the common enemy, which was the Turks. But the Franks didn't understand anything of that, uh, so they came and they they, they took Jerusalem, and uh, it was a horrible massacre, of course, and they created the uh, the, the the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem. So there was the, what are called the four Latin states in the Levant. Edessa, Antioch, Tripoli, and Jerusalem. 
of course, the main one was Jerusalem. It was the only one which was a kingdom. And uh, so who, who was to, to, uh, to be the first king? Well, this Baldwin, who, who had promoted the revolt against, uh, against Toros and had become uh, uh, the Count of Edessa, when he learned about Jerusalem, he fasted quickly, he went to Jerusalem, and he arranged to get the crown. So this Baldwin the first was the, the, the first king of Jerusalem. In Edessa, because the, the, the Armenian element was uh, practically the majority in Edessa, in the county of Edessa, so he, he, uh, he, uh, he married an Armenian princess in order you know, to, have the, 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 to, to get the, the help of the, pop the Armenian population. But when he went to Jerusalem and he became king of Jerusalem, well, his uh, Armenian wife was, was, became useless because there were, there were not very many Armenians in, in Jerusalem. So he divorced. He divorced. And uh, why? It's very interesting to know why. The, the, usually, the, uh, the, the version is that because she, uh, he divorced because she couldn't have any children. But in fact, he had had a wife before and another one later on. And he never had children from all the three wives. So one, the real reason was given by an Armenian, uh, an, an English historian of the, at the moment. He wrote exactly that uh, Baldwin hated the contact with the woman. What does it mean? That he was, uh, that, uh, or, or, that, that he was uh, homosexual or uh, important, one of the two. And that was the reason of the divorce with uh, Arda, this Armenian princess. So they, uh, uh, when, when they, uh, he died, well, they had no hair, hair as well, because he was important. So his cousin, Baldwin II, succeeded, became the second Latin king of Jerusalem. And he also uh, married an Armenian princess, Morphia. But this Morphia had a, an important role, contrary, contrary to the, the first uh, uh, the first Armen Armenian queen, Morphia had a political role, and uh, uh, and they, and they, they didn't have any son, but they had four daughters. And when uh, when uh, Baldwin the second uh, died, so the, well, the four daughters, the younger one was put in a convent, which was very common at that time, but the, the three others, one one became one married the the, the Count of Tripoli. So she became Countess of Tripoli. One married the Count of, uh, of, of, of Antioch. She became the Countess of Antioch. And the older one, the famous Melisande, well, became queen because she was the, 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 the eldest uh, uh, child of, uh, of Baldwin II. And who was to become king? Well, the one who would marry Melisande. So they, they, they brought from uh, France a noble man called Foulque d'Anjou, who married Melisande and became king. But Melisande told him, well, take care, you are king because you are my husband, but I am the queen. So she insisted to be crowned together with, with Foulque, to be crowned, to get the, the crown, the, the royal crown, to, together with Foulque. Ten years later, Fulk died in a hunt accident. They had two sons. So the older, the, the, the elder one, Baldwin became king with, with, uh, uh, with uh, the, the title of Baldwin III. But Morphia, who was his, his mother, said, well, don't remember, you are, you are king because you are my son, but I am the queen. And she insisted to be crowned the second time with her son. Oh, she was a fantastic woman, this Melisande. Fantastic, she was one of the most interesting characters of, of this 12th century of Latin. And the interesting thing is that she, she's totally absent from the Armenian historiography. Why? Well, because, because she was Catholic, because she had to become Catholic to, 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 be, to become queen of Jerusalem. So she's totally absent of the... 
So the, anyway, the, the apart, apart from that, the Armenians continued, the Lupinian dynasty continued in Cilicia. So they were princes. They expanded their uh, territory in the Cilician plain. And they had very good uh, political relations with the Franks, with, uh, with the Latin states. Even there were many, many intermarriages. And, uh, uh, but of course their goal, their goal was to, uh, to become a kingdom. But how do you, how do you, be, how does a prince become a kingdom? Well, he has to receive a crown. Well, who is a crown? Someone who is more than a king. What does it mean more than a king? It means an emperor. Well, but there were that great show, there were only two emperors, the Greek and the German. There were only two empires, the Christian. So with the Greeks, it was excluded because the relations were very bad with the, with the Greek church. But the, 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 the Rubenis were very lucky because the German emperor well, just came in, in Silesia. Why? Why? Well, that is the important thing is that in, uh, so in 1187, the famous uh, Kurdish uh, Muslim leader Salah uh, took back Jerusalem from the Crusaders in 1187. So, he, he, so that was the end of, of the Latin Jerusalem. He took back Jerusalem from the, and, uh, from, from the Franks. And uh, the, the last king uh, of Jerusalem was uh, called Guy de Lusignan. Lusignan was in France near Poitiers. So he was uh, taken prisoner by uh, Salah Eddin. But it's very interesting. Salah Eddin uh, wrote a, what is called a firman, which means an uh, order, a letter, which is kept in the, in the Patriarchate of Jerusalem, the original one. And where he says, more or less, I, I, I may say briefly, well, leave, don't touch at the, at the, the, all the, the Christian minorities, which means the Armenians, the Syriacs, the Copts, and so on. Why? Because the enemy for Saladin were the Greeks and the Franks. He didn't want to have problems with the other Latin. And that's why the Armenians were very, they didn't, they never had problems with, the, with, uh, with Saladin. But of course, the Franks, the, 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 the Western Europe, let's say, couldn't accept the loss of Jerusalem. So <laughs> that was, the, they organized the Third Crusade, a, a new crusade, which was the third one. And who took part? The two main leaders of the Third Crusade were the King of, of England, Richard the Lionheart, and the German Emperor, Frederikos I. The German, uh, the, they, they took different way. The, uh, Richard the Lionheart went by the sea toward Jerusalem, through Cyprus and the sea. But Frederikos uh, uh, the first by the land route, so to Constantinople and then the, the interior of Asia Minor, which was at that time occupied by the Turks. But he, he got two victories over the Turks. He continues. And that was the, 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 Frank, the, the, the Armenian, the Rupian Armenian prince at that time was called Levon II. Well, Levon II, very cleverly, he sent, uh, he sent ambassadors to Frederick I. He told him, we, we shall help you to cross the Taurus mountain to continue your route. But in exchange, you give me a royal crown. And that was it. Levon II was a genius. Uh, the, on diplomatic way, but everything was uh, was nearly falling apart. Why? Because when he entered Silesia, Frederick the First, after having given the, the, the promise of the crown, well, he drowned in a, flood, in, a in a river. He went to the river and just sit down. And uh, so, so that could have been the end of the of the crown for Leon the Second. But he was very clever, uh, he's sent emissaries to the son, the heir of the, 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 the next uh, emperor, and he told, well, you have to, 
you have to, to, to keep the promise of your father. Your father promised the crown, you have to, and that was done. So in 1198, Levon the second prince became King Levon the first. And that was the rebirth of the, of the Armenian kingship, but outside Armenia. So there, there's a usual mistake saying, calling Levon the, uh, the uh, Armenian king of Silesia. No, he was not king of Silesia. There was never a king of Silesia. It's true that Silesia was the, 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 the place where, where, where we ruled, but on his, on his, uh, on his money, on his coins, what is written is called Levon <coughs> Takavor Amenain Hayots. What does that mean, Amenain Hayots? Here also there's a there's a wrong traduction. Where they, they, they very often there is that the Levon king of uh, of all Armenians. That is wrong. Because we are in, in the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages, uh, Hayots comes for Haik, and Haik is Armenia. Not uh, uh, the, the so le, so Levon Takavor Amena in Hayos means Levon King of all Armenia, not of all the Armenians of all Armenia. What does that mean? Well, the interesting thing is to see. Of course, he had uh, his rule was only over Silesia, but it's very interesting that when you, you read the manuscripts written in Armenia, in historical Armenia. Well, the scribe, which was which was mainly a part of it, which was under the, the under the, the, the domain of the king kingdom of Georgia, part of it. Well, the copist, at, like always, at the end of his manuscripts, he writes his colophon, his shadagaran. So he says, "I, I," so his name, uh, and then for three lines saying that he's a stupid, he's not learned everything, you know. I wrote this, uh, I, I finished this uh, manuscript in that year, in that city, under the kingship of his, the, the, the name of the king of Geor Georgia, king of Georgia, and under the kingship of Leon in Armenia, in, uh, of Leon of Armenia. Which means that although although the the, the 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 kings of Armenia in Silesia had no direct rule over the over the laws of of Armenia, but these of Armenia recognized his uh, uh, their their, uh, their uh, suzerainty. So that was the, the beginning of the and uh, this kingdom of Armenia was to last until 1375, so 1198. To 1375, and Levon was very clever. And with an example, uh, he wanted to uh, to get not not only one crown but three crowns. What crowns? Well, the crown from the German emperor, but he wanted also the crown from the Greek emperor. And the Greek emperor sent the crown because thinking that if he didn't do that, he would be an enemy of this new kingdom. So he preferred to have good relations, and he sent also. A king. And the third one was he wanted also to get a crown from the Pope. That was much more difficult, because the Pope said, "Okay, I send you a crown, but you have to become Catholic. I don't send a crown if you are not Catholic." So Levon called all the nobles of Armenia, and he told, told him, ah, "Here we are. Uh, what should we do? The, the Pope says that we have to become Catholic." in order to recognize me as the king. So all of them say, no, 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 impossible. We never accept. They won't say, don't be calm. We'll, 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 we'll accept. I'll get the crown and then we do what we want. <laughs> and so, and so it went. And so it went. <laughs> so Leon got the three crowns and you know, he became very powerful, the king of family. This is an example, but there are others. Uh, why I'm so inter interested, passion passionate in that? Because in this period of, um, of the history of Armenia, the kingship of, uh, uh, of uh, Armenia in Silesia, there were some genius as diplomats and some geniuses also as artists. 
So the Le- Levon the Levon the first was really a, a genius as a as a diplomat. So he could uh, uh, create like that the kingdom, and become recognized by all of them, and also by the Muslim powers. You know, even the Turks on the north of the Taurus they recognized him as a as a king. So uh, Levon was uh, 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 created this kingdom. He expanded the, the boundaries, and the uh, well, the only problem was that the the other family, the Hetumians, because they also wanted to uh, to, to to rule. So when he died, Levon in twelve nineteen. He died with a. Uh, uh, he had two. Uh, uh, he had no son, two daughters. So the elder daughter was married with a prince of Antioch. And this prince of Antioch, uh, in fact, it wasn't very. He wasn't very lucky, because uh, he had a, a, a very uh, Latinophile policy, trying to to get the Armenian Catholics. So after two years, he was killed by the Armenians. Then there was remained the, the younger daughter, Isabel. She was very young, and uh, so she was. She became the heiress of the. But she was uh, about ten or twelve years old. She became the queen of Armenia. So who could uh, w- would become the king? Well, the one who would marry. Uh, well, and that was the, the the genial idea was to make her marry with the heir of the Hetumit family, hmm. who became king under the, 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 the Hetum the first. And that was the reconciliation of the both families. The queen was Rubinian, and the king was Hetumian. Very clever. So Hetum the first uh, uh, became the, the, the king. Well, at the, of, he was more than 20, and the poor Isabel was 10. But never mind. Two years later, they had a, they had a son. Hey, she was a strong Armenian woman. Huh? <laughs> so Hetum the first remains, in my opinion, as the most brilliant king of all the history of Armenia. He had a clever. Uh, it was very. His position was very very dangerous because the Turks north of the Taurus. Were very uh, were, were, were very strong, and he couldn't have the help of the Latin East because uh, after the the, the, the what Lord Jerusalem. Fortunately, because I spoke of the the Crusade of the Frederick the uh, First, but there was also the, the Crusade, the Third Crusade. There was also the English part with Richard the Lionheart. So at the end, at the same moment, so at the end of the 12th century, Richard the Lion has, as I said, he took the, the, the sea way. So he first landed in Cyprus. He captured Cyprus. Then he continued and he fought against Salah, Salah Eddin. He couldn't reoccupy Jerusalem, but he could reoccupy a part of, the, of the, the former Jerusalem kingdom, but without Jerusalem. The, the, so he created a new Je- called the kingdom of Jerusalem, but without Jerusalem. The capital was Acre, St. John of Acre. But it was called like, uh, the, 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 the kingdom of, uh, of, of Jerusalem. And uh, so the Hetum, as an allied, he only could could uh, count over the, this very small Latin kingdom of uh, Jerusalem, but also Cyprus, because Cyprus was also made a kingdom at practically at the same moment at, as, uh, as, Ar- as Armenia. So the 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 because why uh, the, the 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 Richard the Lionheart put as a ruler of Cyprus, a Lusignan prince, Guy de Lusignan, who was the, 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 the last king of Jerusalem who was beaten, had been beaten by Salah Eddin. Why? Because at that time, and that's very important, the west of France, including Lusignan, which is near Poitiers, 
did not depend on, on the crown, the French crown. It depend on the English crown for matrimonial reasons. So this Guy de Lusignan was a, uh, was a vassal of Richard de Lionheart. So Richard de Lionheart gave, gave uh, the, the island of Cyprus to his Lusignan vassals. The, 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 um, see, uh, the Guy de Lusignan died before, but it's his brother, Amaury de Lusignan, who was crowned king of Cyprus. So pra practically at the same moment, the kingdom of Armenia and the kingdom of Cyprus were, uh, were created. And they were very allied. That was the main alliance of Armenia, Cyprus. Because both were in a hostile, uh, uh, in a, in a hostile uh, uh, world. Um, so they were very, uh, and, and there were many intermarriages between the Lusignans of Cyprus and the Armenians of uh, the, 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 the Armenians of Cilicia. Many intermarriages at that point. That, but we see that a little bit later. That twice, twice the crown of Armenia was on the head of a Lusignan prince. So Hetum the first had a very difficult, uh, the difficult uh, uh, situation in front of the Turks. He even had, a, he was obliged to strike coins with on one side the Arme on, in Armenian and on the other side in Turkish to show his vassality to the Turks, to avoid the Turks uh, coming to invade Sali, Silesia. But a miracle happened there. From the east came a new people, totally unknown, the Mongols. The Mongols led, led, led by the famous Genghis Khan and his successors. So the, the, the Mongols, contrary to the Turks at that time, the Mongols were not Muslim at all. They, and they were more anti-Muslims and even pro-Christians. Many of the Mongol leaders had taken Christian wives. So when the Mongols came in, uh, entered from the east to Asia Minor, well, they, 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 uh, they fought against the Turks. And there was a, a famous, uh, in the 1240s, a famous battle at a place called the Kösedar in the north of Asia Minor, where the Turks was, were crushed by the Mongols. And who was fighting also with the Mongols? The Armenians. Hetum had understood that the enemies of my enemies are my friends. So he came, he went to, to fight, he sent an army to fight together with the Mongols. And even more, he decided to, uh, uh, to, to strengthen the alliance with the Mongols. And how come? Wait, to go to, 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 to go all the way to Mongolia, thousands of kilometers. So first of all, he sent his, he sent his brother, who was the, the chief general, the, the, his brother, uh, the, the Sumbat constable. So Sumbat went to the Mongol capital, Karakorum. But the Mongols were very strict about the hierarchy. So they said, he, who are you? Well, I'm brother of the king. Well, sorry, but uh, the king has to come himself. So Sambat went back and he said to his brother, well, now you have to go. And so he too, that was fantastic. This, uh, and the, the, the whole journey is, uh, is, uh, is told by, a, by a, an Armenian historian, Giragos Gonzagetsi, the, 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 the enormous journey. And also by a Syriac historian, Barre Braus. And Barry Braus tells something very interesting. Uh, when, when the 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 Hetum, Hetum was accompanied with with a, with, a, with a Mongol uh, uh, ambassador to show the way. And uh, 
when they when they, but they had to cross Asia Minor, which was in the in the hands of the Turks, in order to go to Mongolia. So Hetum was uh, has to disguise as a merchant, the king. And uh, and uh, uh, and he was with the ambassador. When they went, when they crossed the city of Erzinjan, in the east of Asia Minor, someone in the street looked at them and said, "That is the king of Armenia." Well, that should have been the end of everything, because he would have been killed. Who saved the uh, the, uh, the the the, ki the kingship of Armenia? The Mongol ambassador. What did he do? He how they say, slapped the king. And the king didn't react. Well, so the mind said, well, oh, so I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna. The, the, king would have the king would have left him like that. Uh, so this Mongol ambassador saved the, uh, the, the, the kingdom of Armenia. I remember when, uh, uh, when Devonter Petrosian was president, of, uh, because he is also a specialist of Silesia, I told him you should, in Yerevan, you should make a statue of this unknown Mongol ambassador who saved the kingdom, who saved the kingdom by this uh, reaction. Anyway, uh, so uh, Hetum continued. He arrived in Karakorum after thousands of kilometers. And uh, so he, he, he uh, signed the alliance, the official alliance of the Armenians with the Mongols. And that was very important. Why? Well, the Turks, the, as, I, as I said, the Turks was vanquished. They, were, they, were, uh, they had been beaten by the Mongols. But a new Muslim power uh, what was rising at that time in Egypt, that were the Mamluks. The Mamluks were former slaves who had, be, who had taken the power in, uh, in Egypt and found the dynasty, the dynasty of the, of, of the Mamluks who was very, uh, uh, very powerful. So now the whole, the whole uh, uh, game was between the, the Mamluks and the Mongols. The Armenians were on the, of course, on the Mongol side. And there was a, a but the, the, the difficulty for the Armenians is that the Mongols, okay, they were there, but their main interest was, was still Mongolia, which was very far away. On the contrary, the Mamluks were very well, uh, were, were there in Egypt. They, they conquered the, big, the biggest part of Syria. And so the, 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 it was very difficult for the other. I think one example, the first time the, uh, the, there was a, uh, the Mongols went to fight the Mamluks in Syria. And together, was, together with them was the King Hetum, to, to, with them in, well, in the army. And on the way, they passed the, the fortress of Horongla on the Euphrates. Horongla was the seat of the Catholicos. Well, the Catholicos came from Horongla and he, uh, uh, oh, he was, uh, oh, he, what do we say? To, he, uh, Benir, he, to, uh, Ozets, uh, Benir, to, uh, um. the, Venice, huh? Venice, no, no. Oh, uh, no, no, no. This is... Bless, praise, bless, praise. Blessed. Yeah, blessed. The, uh, so the, the Catholic, I mean, we can imagine the, the moral emperor Hulagu being blessed by the Catholic of Armenia. Then they continued against the they uh, they uh, they vanquished. They they were uh, they, they were victorious over the the Mamluks, but they didn't continue towards Egypt because the center of the Mamluk power was Egypt. 
They didn't continue towards Egypt. The Mongols came, went back. And then the Mamluks, well, could, uh, uh, could have uh, the, the, the victorious over, became victorious over the Armenians who were alone. So that was the limit of the Mongol alliance, which could not be very uh, sure because of the, the, for the Mongols, it was a very extreme of, of their uh, kingdom, you know, this part. So the, after the, the uh, uh, and, and something very important also, this fact of the, the, the Catholic was blessing the, 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 army, the, the, the Mongol Khan, the Mongol emperor, it has a, a kind of echo in the in in the in the uh, in the, the Armenian miniature, why the most the the the, most, the better known of all the Armenian paint, uh, miniaturist painters of all the centuries is to, to, called Toros Roslin. And Toros Roslin used to uh, to uh, work at Romla with the Catholicos. So when when the Khan. Mongol Khan Hulagu came to, uh, uh, was blessed by the Catholicos. Toros Torosin was with them. And when he came back to Romgla, he made one of the most fantastic miniatures he made. There's the defendant of the adoration of the May, May of the Mage, the three, uh, and on the top of the, of the, 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 the three uh, Mage king, kings, you see the Mongols. The Mongols, which uh, which are kind of as, as the savers, as the savers of, of of Armenia, the Mongols. So, but little by little, uh, the, the, the 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 balance was more 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 and more uh, towards the Mamluks, mostly because in twelve ninety one. The Mamluks put an end to this kingdom of Jerusalem. Although there wasn't Jerusalem, but still it was it was a kingdom. So they put an end to it. So the only ally which remained for the Armenians was Cyprus. The only one. The only other Christian state in the area was uh, Cyprus after 1291. So the, the, that was the beginning of the downfall of the, the kingdom of Armenia. After Hetum the first, he was succeeded by his son, Levon, Levon the second. But after the, so the, the death of Levon the second, that was the end of uh, that, the, the, the end of the, 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 the three big kings were Levon the first, Hetum the first, Levon the second. After that, it was the downfall of the kingdom which began. The next king was, was Hetum II, who was very weak, very weak king, and, uh, uh, and even more, he was very pro-Catholic. And so that, that put a kind of a civil fight in, inside the kingdom, because many of the lords refused the conclusions of uh, Hetum the Second. Hetum the Second even called for a council in Cis, the capital, a council in Cis, in order to uh, to, uh, uh, to to convert to Catholicism, well, which was rejected by the Armenians. But that weakened very much the the kingdom. And all the, the 14th century was a, a kind of weakening and weakening and, and loss of territories, loss of territories, uh, little by little. In uh, 1342, it's a, a, a Lusignan from Cyprus who became king of Armenia, Guy de Lusignan, but only for two years. <coughs> After the crown came back for today to meet, but in, in, in 1374, again, a Lusignan received the crown. It was Levon, Levon V Lusignan, who was to be the last king of Armenia. 
he was king le less than one year. He was, he, he was crowned in 1374, and the Mamluks put an end to the, Armenia, the kingdom of Armenia the next year, in 1375. So that was the end, this time, the end of any kingdom of Armenia anywhere, 1375. So this Levon V was taken uh, uh, prisoner in Cairo. But uh, the, so the, the, in order to, to release him, the, the, uh, the, the, in, in, in order to release him, the, the Sultan, the Mamluk Sultan, wanted uh, uh, the, the, the amount of, uh, an enormous amount of money. This ransom was paid by the king of Castilla in Spain. And Levon V was freed by the king of Castilla. So he went to Spain and then, well, he was from, his uh, far origin was, was, was French, so then he went to, to France. And he died in Paris in 1393. And his uh, cenotaph is in the, the Basilica of Saint-Denis, of Saint-Denis among, among the, French, the kings of France. He's the only king who is in Saint-Denis without having been king of France, but king of another state. He's the only one. So this is a, a, a very interesting, uh, why, why is it so interesting? Because the, 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 if you look at the map, Silesia, the, the geographical position is, a, is a, a, among the, the, all the, 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 the great powers, let's say. So during that period, the Armenians had contact with, uh, with everyone. And that, that was the richness, the, the, the wealth of the Armenian uh, culture. So that's it. Uh, the, The, uh, in, so, in, so in 1375 marked the end of any kingship of Armenia. So uh, uh, Silesia fell under the Mamluk yoke, and later the Ottoman yoke. And the Ottoman yoke well ended as you were the well-known massacres of Silesia in the, in the 20, beginning of the 20th century. But so, as I say, it remained a very brilliant page of Armenian history, and and uh, there were it uh, also very very great uh, historiographers like Vartan Arevelsi, Kiragos Gonzagesi, Vahram Ravun, uh, uh, a very a very uh, uh, an extraordinary uh, school of painting. With the miniatures, as I said the the the, the, be, the the most famous one is Toros Roslin, but there are others. Toros Roslin is in the 13th century. In the 14th century, there was also a very great uh, miniaturist called uh, Sarkis Bizak. And so uh, it remains as a very uh, brilliant. Uh, the, the, I was fascinated also by, by Silesia. And uh, in fact, the, the first book I wrote in history was called S Silesia at the Crossroad of the Empires. Because it was really a crossroad, Silesia. Okay.